So I think this is a very positive thing that is happening. And let's all, you know, have an adventure of our own because it's going to be very new for us. That's all from my end now. Okay. Thanks, Swati. So uh, we have time for any questions that we have for Swati. Just to let you know, uh, Swati has been doing a series of workshops with uh, school teachers from a variety of backgrounds. Uh, right, uh, the demographics has had the entire range. Yeah. And hence, uh, yeah. So uh, the uh, that's that's the part I I like. That's the reason I feel that the insights are coming from. Uh, a very meaningful survey. It's not limited to only specific section of yeah. our society. Yeah. Another thing that we do is we make a lot of math kits out of things that are usually thrown out. Boxes, um, old paper, chart paper, posters, and things like that. So we get teachers to make it themselves so they know how to make it. The things are available in their locality. So if anything gets damaged or missing, the teachers know how to replace them. And it can be produced, especially at the upper primary level, this can be mass produced by the children themselves. And frankly, when you make material from scratch, a lot of things get assessed immediately. Lot of measurement, construction, uh, precision, estimation, optimization, a uh, lot of these things automatically gets uh, assessed. Uh, so Swati, there are a couple of questions on the chat, which uh, I'll read out for you. So uh, Minu ma'am wants you to give a few more examples uh, on linkages. And uh, Vidya ma'am is asking about uh, where do we get some sample questions, especially mathematics. So, so I think we are working are, towards yeah. the workbook for the sample questions. Um, See, linkages are there a lot of the time. And it's just, see, math by nature is axiomatic. To put in layman's words, it's bottoms up. Once you define things as they are, they can be built up. So if you, do, it just, if you need to just pause and think why this is so and why not some other way, the answers are there. And thereby you will get a lot of connections, etc. Um, yeah, so okay, in Swati, terms of you... biology and math, uh, one place where it really connects very well is very large numbers and very small numbers. I mean, if you think of the size of cells and the things within, within our body, you have, you know, examples of very, very small numbers, right? And then, and that can be connected to negative exponents, the scientific notation of writing very small numbers, et cetera, et cetera. And before that, when you want to know about, you know, large numbers, think about how many hair we have, how many pores we have and all of that. And you immediately get very large numbers and you can do a lot of these things through it. Uh, exactly, surface area and villi and, and all those things. Uh, for chemistry, if you think of crystal structures, um, if you think of uh, how the atoms connect with each other, valency and stuff like that, there's a lot of math connect. I, I, one of my friend who is a chemistry professor actually you know, is completely in love with mathematics and symmetry and was you know, about to write a book. I don't know where he is on that. So, uh, so that is there. Um, I think somebody had a question on textbooks. Um, Okay, there's one more question on textbooks. Uh, see, it is easier to find real life examples for textbooks and NCRT textbooks have done a quite good job. You can also look into um, Sikkim textbooks that we have been part of developing. And that also has a lot of connection with life, etc. See, in upper primary, certain things are slightly more difficult to connect to real life. Uh, so 
that ha hasn't happened so greatly yet. And that's exactly where this whole workbook and this whole venture of Think Tank is. Uh, some things can connect to real life very easily. Uh, equations, for example, uh, but certain things may not. Uh, so those have to be thought about. Um, for example, uh, let me see if I can show you something real quick. While Swati is searching that, let me clarify one thing. Uh, examples for case-based questions. Uh, we are going to show some of the examples. And as Swati said, on science and maths, we have already started developing some workbooks. I'll give a okay. quick glimpse of some, and they are related to all the three uh, subjects, physics, chemistry, as well as biology. And so uh, here is, yeah, yeah. yeah so here's ahead. one thing. Um, we all know that if you are given three sides, you can construct an unique triangle. Okay. However, if you are given four sides, uh, you may not be able to get a uh, exactly one quadrilateral. So three sides, one triangle, and there's no way you can, you know, bend it or anything. Whereas you have four sides and it can be a square or it can be a rhombus. Okay. Now, this aspect is very important when you think about earthquake proof structures or rigid structures. And that is why you will see whenever people make any structures with say bamboo or something, they will automatically triangulate it. Even if you look at uh, many of the wooden school benches, you will see a, a, a piece of wood like this. You know, that's the triangulation which kind of makes it rigid, makes it fixed. So that's a real life application of geometry, but these are something that needs to be worked on by people. And that's one of the things that Think Tank is doing. Less work has happened in this part. Okay, so we, we have time for taking only one more question. Last question, uh, it's, it's uh, actually, uh, Sad to stop because uh, there are so many questions which people have put. Maybe. Uh... So between mathematics and EVS, uh, that's where data handling can come and play a huge role in terms of, you know, making different kinds of graphs and then talking about distribution. Uh, the entire data handling statistics part in our syllabus which starts from class one and goes up to class 11 is very poorly designed. Um, given that I do have a statistics background, um, it's something that you know we are still working on. Um, but let's see what all can be done. There's a lot of scope, lot of possibilities. Okay. Uh, so Swati, if, if you can be around, uh, it, it would be good if you can stay for the entire workshop because uh, it, I'll try to effectively be. it's only half an hour uh, j just in case more questions can be taken sure sure thanks thanks a lot Swati in fact when uh, I, I remember uh, one of the workshops we attended uh, with Swati it was on the uh, quadratic growth exponential growth etc and one example which has uh, Stayed with me is a very simple uh, fact that if you look at the, if you plot the data of the amount of electricity humans are using every year, then the curve is exponential. And one may think that okay, fine, it's exponential. What does it mean? One uh, very specific aspect of anything which grows exponentially is the fact that if you add up, so if I take the total amount of electricity we will be using in 2021. And I add up the electricity used by humanity till 2020. The amount of electricity used in 2021 will be bigger than that. And that was a big, really hard hitting for, not just for me, I realized even many people in, the, in our workshop batch, which is what, in fact, the person uh, who designed the chess game, that's one of the stories that he asked the king to give, uh, put one grain on each chess board, but keep doubling it every next and uh, this is where uh, some of these learnings connect to real life. And that's where even children have 
similar aha moments so i i also see that there are a lot of questions related to the actual workbook let's see we have around half an hour's time we do plan to take one one question as an example and i'll also give a glimpse of some of the workbooks which have already got designed so that you can visualize it so without spending more time uh, let me proceed with the <clears throat> actual process which we are proposing and also uh, quickly show some of the examples the workbook examples so yes uh, cb itself there is a uh, shift which is required as we already discussed the curriculum has to reduce only then we can make space for spending time on some of these aspects in fact that was also one of the questions on the chat window that if we want to do things like experiential learning how do you do that in uh, the limited time that we have but it will be feasible if the curriculum that we have to cover has to be reduced and our experience says that typically for experiential learning sessions you would require a block period one period usually does not suffice especially to also connect the dots <clears throat> okay uh, the assessment aspect so this is uh, the real background of the workshop so <clears throat> so uh, ragu i'm i'm not sure why the uh, waiting room notifications keep coming i'm not able to see my slides if there is a way to disable the waiting room because uh, it will not be manageable otherwise <clears throat> so please check if that's possible yeah yes. i will check so, yeah thanks raku so especially about competency based education the focus is on uh, not to have a large content base but rather focus on some of the core concepts and hence the curriculum needs to be reduced and also have focus on assessing the skills the competencies uh, which also means that automatically when the questions are designed in a way that uh, you try to test the competencies and even if i know the background knowledge if i have the background knowledge i still need to think while giving answer to the question and that's when there is a shift from uh, as uh, assessing the learning to uh, enabling the students learn while they are being assessed what's also going to happen especially for cbse is that unlike before the uh, number of board exams there'll be more continuous so even the third fifth and eighth grade the board exams may start happening is what we have uh, got to know which of course helps in uh, continuous assessment and as you all may already know starting from this year for the 10th exam which is what we are focusing on right now is uh, the fact that 20% of the marks will be on uh, the weightage will be given to uh, case study questions and what we also hear from uh, the cbse team uh, including directly from the chairman is that this number is only going to increase over a period of time we hear that in the next 3 to 5 years the uh, weightage given to assessing competencies and not just the curriculum information will increase to somewhere close to 60% only thing is uh, as i said earlier it requires little practice because it's a shift from our side shift to the way we look at things and uh, that's the whole reason we came up with the thought of having a workbook which can be given to children to practice just to also state the background starting from this year the question papers will have four case study questions and each case study question will have five questions out of which children have the option of writing any four so that's how it adds up to 16 out of the 80 marks what's also interesting is specifically for science uh, three marks have been allotted for this a very unique style of questioning which is the assertion and reasoning style we will cover one sample of that questions as well so total of 19 marks at least in science and other subjects uh, 20% marks are allotted to uh let's now look at the gold technique which we are proposing the let's look at the process and for that uh, we'll give 
few examples. <clears throat> but before we go to that, let's look at the general question that what's special about these case study questions. So typically in any case study question, there would be a background, a context given, which is a real life situation. Uh, while the students are expected to know certain things from the curriculum, which they should be able to recall at that time and apply, there would also be some information given as part of the case. And together, all these three have to be uh, comprehended and applied. And of course, uh, depending on the uh, objective of that particular question, there's a different thinking skill which the child may have to apply. If it's about analyzing a graph, then there's certain kind of competencies used. If it's about, let's say, quantifying something and uh, based on that inferring, then problem solving kind of uh, skills will get used. Okay, so uh, here is the first example which we have picked from uh, our workbook and I know that uh, we have a variety of uh, teachers and uh, uh, school principals. I will give enough information for you to be able to participate and I would request you to uh, give your answers on the chat window. So before I put the question, let me uh, give enough information about the case itself. So the <clears throat> The situation is that, uh, as some of you may already know, our body starts the digestion process in the mouth itself. And in the mouth, we have two things happening. The teeth grind the food into smaller particles so that the surface area increases. And hence, the chemical changes which happen later, chemical reaction, they can happen faster. But one of the important digestions which starts in the mouth itself, which is a chemical reaction, is the digestion of the starch part the, which gives us energy starch part of the food which gets sped up through this enzyme named as amylase what's given as part of the case is one experiment was conducted where iodine is added to, to the food sample saliva is added and the sample is kept aside in different temperature environments and the time which it takes for the color to change, that's noted. Just so that you can visualize, I'll take one minute and quickly demonstrate this. So I have uh, some rice water. So some rice particles at the bottom, but they have got dissolved nicely and I'll take a sample, just uh, maybe few ml, one to two ml, and I have iodine, which we can get from any of these uh, medical stores. This happens to be povidon iodine, and I'll take a uh, few drops of iodine and add to this. The So iodine acts as an indicator for the presence of starch. So if starch is present, then the color changes to blue-black. Let me add, uh, so it looks like the concentration of the solution which I've taken is not uh, dark enough. So let me add, after stirring, I'll add just few more drops. And now this sample, I'll leave it aside after adding some saliva. So I've collected some saliva in this container and I'll add that and we will leave aside. And as you can see, we are setting this up right now at uh, room temperature. And the case says that if the same experiment is done at different temperatures, is there a different impact? Let's come back to the case. We will look at what, we, uh, what saliva does to this uh, sample a little later. Now, if you have to answer a question on this, so let me put the question. The 
let's pay attention to the process we would follow to answer this question because if we realize it then that's what we will be able to help our students with so in this particular case i want you to type on the chat window how many pieces of information you are gathering from the case so while uh, you may know as a 10th standard child that uh, <clears throat> starch digestion happens in the mouth and there are enzymes which enable that and amylase is one of the enzymes which is given here so how many pieces of information you are gathering from the case Let me come back to this question a little later. <clears throat> and the question is, the students are supposed to come up with a hypothesis which explains this behavior, which explains the graph. The options given are, as the temperature decreases, the time taken for the reaction also decreases because when the temperature is low the molecules are closer and hence the chances of reaction they increase the probability of reaction second is as the temperature increases the time taken for digestion comes down and the reason is at higher temperature the molecules are moving faster and hence they would collide and the chances of reaction are higher third is that there is an impact on the ph because of which the digestion is uh, affected and fourth is, so note that third and fourth is not saying the relationship between temperature and digestion time. It's only changes that it gets influenced. It's only stating that it gets influenced. And point number four, option four is saying uh, it's because the food melts or freezes as the temperature changes. Let me have a quick look at the chat so that uh, I also know the thinking process uh, that you all are sharing. Very nice. It's it's uh, so heartening to see the active participation. So yes, it's interesting that uh, there are responses. People are picking different options. Some of you have said option two. Some are saying four. Uh, some of you have said three. It's interesting to note that no one has opted for option number one so far at least very nice thank you everyone we will proceed with the discussion because the focus is not okay we have somebody who has opted for option one <laughs> we have two teachers okay let us look okay now there are more that's an interesting behavior pattern Let's look at the answer and more importantly, my interest is not to look at the answer, but the process we follow to come up with the answer. In this case, how many sub questions did you need to answer so as to answer this one question? Sorry. And pay attention to the fact that when a question is posed to us, in fact, you can look at this question itself. If you have to answer this question, how many sub questions did you need to answer to answer this question? That itself puts some question in our head. Sometimes we are aware and conscious about it, sometimes we are not. So let's say the very first basic thing is why do I need sub questions? And uh, what, what gets categorized as a sub question? <clears throat> but in our context, what are the sub questions? Let's look at some of the examples. So the process we followed is first from the case, we gathered some information and note that initially the information could be placed uh, not in one particular order. It could be as and when things are coming. 
we may take the notes in this case it could be a new information for someone that yeah amylase is present in saliva uh, that's one important thing in designing case based questions that while we can assume that certain curricular knowledge is available with the child there is no harm in revising uh, and reminding certain aspects which may not have been emphasized very clearly in the textbook second uh, that amylase uh, catalyzes so it speeds up the uh, process now it's possible that while taking notes as a child i'm not clear about the term catalyze what does it mean so maybe i also take a note of that question because then this becomes one of my sub question <clears throat> and the fact that when the color changes from blue black to colorless let's see if that has happened in our sample not yet so the process is still going on and uh, note that it's already close to 5 uh, to 7 minutes but if the same thing was done at higher temperatures things would have been much faster so i may take note about the fact that digestion is indicated when the color changes from blue black to colorless and the one of the important pieces of information is that the graph shape is downwards it's declining what else do you do so now that we have gathered the information let's organize this uh, the information and one of the neatest way to organize and make make our thoughts move forward is to ask these smaller pieces of questions so in this case the main question says i have to come up with a hypothesis explaining the behavior and the first question is based on the graph what do i think as the temperature increases does the digestion time increase or decrease and right there if you pay attention some of the uh, one of the four options gets negated so if i look at the declining graph i realize that as the temperature increases the digestion time is decreasing now here the background knowledge we are assuming is that child is aware that on the x axis as you move right in the right direction then the value is increasing and on the y axis as you move upward the values are increasing and that's another interesting integration which is happening quite neatly <clears throat> so uh, coming back that's the first sub question and based on that uh, there's another sub question that what happens when the temperature increases what happens to the particles of the substance <clears throat> on another track there is this question about uh, in the first place is digestion a physical change or a chemical change and why would that be important because if it is a chemical change then certain things that i already know related to chemical reactions can apply here uh, <clears throat> is it that when the frequent collisions happen the reaction any chemical reaction that would happen faster after that some more sub questions to note that some of these questions have arrived directly from the case but now when i start looking at the four options which are given there are these other sub questions which is is ph related to temperature at all and does food always melt when the temperature increases so if you realize to answer one question and this is more common in case of case based questions that you need to ask you need to ask and answer multiple sub questions because all of them have to be applied and that's why the child needs to practice the ability what uh, to recall the appropriate knowledge and apply and the, what lies at the center is the proportionality aspect which we already discussed that if i pay attention to the <clears throat> fact that the graph is declining and that itself tells me that the relationship is inversely proportional what is the curricular knowledge that i need to have now this is where uh, we can't compartmentalize as a 10th standard child i should be able to apply what i have learned in the 9th standard that kinetic particle theory tells me that when the when heat is added when the temperature increases then the molecules have higher energy and hence they move uh, at a different rate <clears throat> also uh, <clears throat> i should be able to recall and apply that digestion involves chemical reaction and the fact that ph generally does not change with temperature 
what I need to be able to apply from real life, I should have seen that if I heat rise, it may break into smaller parts, but it does not melt. Now, based on this, finally, when I follow the process, I'm able to see that uh, if I look at the options, the first option gets eliminated right there. And elimination is quite often a very neat technique for answering multiple choice questions, which is what is the current plan for all case study questions. So I can eliminate option one by the virtue of the fact that the two are inversely proportional, the two quantities. Uh, <clears throat> second is, uh, I think there is a typo here. So I eliminate the uh, option three because it's not uh, consistent with the, uh, oh, sorry. So I also, uh, Option two is consistent with the kinetic particle theory, whereas option three, it, uh, it contradicts the fact which I know that pH does not change with temperature and option four, it contradicts with my real life knowledge that food does not always melt. So what we just looked at is the gold technique, which is you gather the information, organize it in the form of uh, a series of sub questions. I also recall the appropriate uh, curricular knowledge and real life knowledge, and then I'm able to apply it to answer. And based on that, there's a very specific learning. Uh, <clears throat> let's look back at how practical is this entire thing, because it may also sound very overwhelming that really do for each question in exam, I have only nine minutes to solve one case study. And am I going to do all this gather, organize, apply? Uh, the idea is, as children practice this, it should start happening in the subconscious. It may not be necessary for them to take elaborate notes and actually note down all the sub questions. What's also very important is, we are proposing that at the end, after the child has answered, it's important that the child takes a note of what I've learned out of this. So uh, the workbook that we are coming up with, which we are designing, we are giving the space and note that it will be a very short space where child can write maximum up to two learnings and two explorations. So some questions which have not got answered, let's say in this case, would this apply to all kinds of chemical reactions or is it specific about starch digestion in the mouth in the presence of amylase. That is it that in general, all chemical reactions at higher temperatures, they speed up. Second question could be that, yeah, in that case, if I put the sample in boiling water, then would the digestion happen in zero time? Because then it's uh, very interesting, right? Uh, I can start applying it in so many places. <clears throat> uh, the way this, kind of structure would help is the learning gets registered in the child's head and the process of exploration that would continue. Here is another example uh, from math. Uh, we, it specifically focuses on the uh, mensuration chapter. The situation is that uh, we have this uh, person, a vendor who sells uh, peanuts Mungfali wala, right, as some of us call it. Unlike other uh, peanut vendors, this particular person, he has these cutout circular three fourths of a circle, which he folds to make a cone and just puts a tape. And the way it helps this vendor is that, uh, depending on the size of the cutout, he can quickly pick if it is a 20 rupee order, he can he'll pick one particular type of circle. If it is a 10 rupee order, he'll pick another one. And what happened with this vendor is two customers, they said, we want the freedom. So you give us the uh, same uh, set of peanuts, but give us in two different cones. And what this uh, vendor had to do was to cut this into exactly half and make two cones. And the question is, what do you think uh, happened. So did the vendor go into loss? So is it that he ended up giving more peanuts than if he had given in a single cone? 
or is it that the customers went into a loss or is it that it doesn't matter there yeah. same of course it's a thought experiment and slightly hypothetical situation but it has the real aspect a uh, real life aspect that uh, we don't have the ready made diagram given to the child so for the child to be able to apply the knowledge of the formula for calculating the volume of a cone child should be able to first see that uh, what is the radius what is the uh, height of this cone because then i will be able to enter it in the formula and though the case says that he uses 15 cm radius circle the case is not explicitly saying about one particular size so if the size is not given to me what do i do should i assume some size what should that size be <clears throat> and though it sounds very simple unfortunately it is not we have we all have seen that this is the place where let's say if i have to if i am given a particular number that this is the size of the cone then i can calculate the volume but if i have to assume if i have to come up with a number randomly that's something which many of us find more difficult and the question is not asking what's the volume of the cone it's asking which one is more which one is less which is what you would uh, go through in real life and here is one more example uh, i'm sorry i'm not able to pay attention to the chat uh, so raghu if there are uh, any important uh, questions please uh, pause me and uh, we can unmute the person and uh, have them ask the question otherwise we'll take them slightly uh, just little later here is one example of assertion and reasoning uh, question in this case uh, one of the applications of electromagnetism is this uh, very interesting uh, design which is a rail gun okay and as i said earlier i'll give enough information about the case so that you all are able to appreciate it with me so uh, the rail of course is a good conductor and also the projectile so the metal projectile is shot from the gun so that itself is a good conductor of electricity and hence if the current is flowing in this direction a magnetic field will be produced in certain uh, certain manner in this case if you apply the right hand thumb rule the magnetic field is pointing inside inside the paper or inside the screen <clears throat> after that if we apply the fleming's rule we should be able to infer which direction the projectile will be shot now the assertion being made is pretty simple that based on the diagram the <clears throat> number of loops number of turns which is what you will typically have in any electromagnet that is uh, there are two such loops two turns and the reason says that this is good conductor this is good conductor and that's where the loop gets over so in this particular case uh, the assertion is incorrect but the reason is relevant and correct so the as per the reason i can derive that there is only one loop only one conductor and if you notice this question is quite different from what we are used to in the regular papers because the question is not asking them asking the child to apply fleming left hand rule and come up with one right answer it's about what do you think how many turns how many, do you really have an electromagnet there so let me sum it up so that uh, we can take up more questions i'll also show some samples as i had promised earlier so while designing these workbooks there are some things that we are keeping in mind we thought it would be worth sharing with you all also so that if you start designing case questions what are the things that uh, you may want to keep in mind so as i say it is the real life connect which makes uh, case questions special <clears throat> what we need to be uh, aware is a case question should actually never test just the prior knowledge we have the rest of the paper for that case question should surely uh, test the child's ability to apply child's ability to analyze solve a problem Uh, etc the thinking aspect and uh, it's also important to be fair to the child we don't assume that uh, each child would for example in this case let's say rail gun that i cannot assume that each child would know uh, the design of a rail gun 
uh, <clears throat> also i need to explicitly state that the metal projectile is a good conductor of electricity <clears throat> and uh, based on that if the assessment is assessing the child's ability to uh, let's say these are the three aspects when it comes to scientific uh, temper which is the ability to apply knowledge in real life analyze interpret data and evaluate an inquiry process uh we have also come up with a program if some of you are interested in directly picking that up which is of course the workbook is one aspect but there would be some live sessions just to support the child initially and this is how the program would go that uh, we will pick one uh, case study question the first case where in the first session live session we will use that as an example and uh, introduce the goal technique to the children they get a break work on the uh, case study and after coming back we actually look at each of the questions analyze it from different point of views and again apply the goal technique so that it registers in their mind and we give them the option of using certain templates uh, if they are interested in <clears throat> after that so we would do this hand holding process for the first two cases uh, and later we would have we will have a single session for another set of uh, case studies where the child will spend 10 minutes during the session and uh, answer the case because 10 minutes is all that the ch children will get in the actual exam and after they have uh, written the case study for these initial few we will have a quick discussion so unlike the first two cases where we will have two sessions later we will have a single session and then some more set of uh, case studies will be given away to them for practice which if they uh, answer on our platform they will also receive the answer keys as soon as they uh, submit the workbook they will receive they will receive the email which has the answers to these questions <clears throat> so total program we have designed is a two weeks program let's look at the partnership options if you find this interesting and uh, we you would like to work together the program which i talked about is one option of course we have also been working with teachers on each of these aspects uh, with a detailed uh, teacher training program so please indicate your interest if you are interested in that and uh, we also have some uh, free case based questions uh, which uh, the teachers can use for them to start building on please uh, fill the feedback form and indicate your interest uh, you can scan the qr code or also click on the link which uh, raghu would have shared on the chat window here are our contacts in case uh, you want to contact directly you may note them down I'll pause for maybe five seconds and then uh, show some of the workbooks that we have designed. Just a quick glimpse so that uh, you are able to visualize what it looks like. Uh, Raku, anything that uh, uh, Vishal, you would there like to? Uh, there are plenty actually questions. So today is uh, <laughs> we have uh, crossed the time. what we can do with uh, the permission of uh, manila ma'am tomorrow we'll hold an exclusive q and a session say at 4 uh, o'clock to 5 o'clock or 5 to 6 and the same link can be used those who would like to ask questions i have seen at least uh, some 20 30 questions we are unable to answer uh, since it has come during various part of the conference uh, we can hold a session exclusively that we heard tomorrow uh, there may not be uh, schools uh, school sessions sorry so no. we will get back to you and we will email you if uh, the questions lot of uh, you had questions so we'll be happy to answer that we'll come back to you on that and we'll inform you within uh, a short time about the uh, session q and a session exclusively 
hope uh, uh, we can give uh, some time to everyone and what we One will minute. do ragu is uh, this uh, the, the chat we will download and uh, uh, analyze it and come we prepared with the uh, answers to the questions which uh, have been asked on the chat window for the session yeah. tomorrow yeah vishal can you please unmute manila ma'am i am unable to do she would like to i'll do that sure yeah. sure sure Ma'am, please check if you have received the request to unmute. Ma'am, uh, have you received the request to unmute yourself? Uh, I can. I can. I make, yeah. I can. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Vishal, for the detailed explanation about the case today. I know teachers will definitely have a lot of questions in this regard, but unfortunately, we will not be able to have tomorrow because I'm sure you're reading in the papers also tomorrow there is a mass protest by the teachers. you know and many of the schools are joining teachers are joining so tomorrow we will not be able to do it uh, but what i can do is uh, if you can write the answers the questions whatever teachers have put in the chat box i can upload in the sahodaya portal and teachers can access from there otherwise you have to give your mail id so that they can write to you directly for any clarification would that be fine i think we can do both ma'am uh, we'll compile the answers and uh, send it to you and as yes. as you said uh, people can also directly contact us yes yes if you can give we can in the chat box if you put your uh, contact details um, i sure. think in the feedback form is it there your details are there so they'll be able uh, to access from there or you can put in the chat box so teachers can copy that yes, i'm, I'm sharing uh, mine and ragu's uh, yes. email id uh, ragu is that fine yeah yeah fine perfectly fine yeah. Yeah. so teachers can write to you all directly so you can clarify their doubts sure the yeah, grade 10 as i understand ma'am uh, it is uh, four out of five questions so the number of marks is anyways four so if they answer all five uh, i don't think uh, that fetches them anything extra in terms of marks so shall we are we winding up now yes ma'am yeah So thank you so much once again to all the participants for being so active in the chat box and I was just reading the questions that were posed and the way you were answering for the questions that were posed by the resource person. So thank you so much. I'm sure this workshop has been wonderful and uh, it is useful for you all. Uh, so thank you, Vishal, and the entire team of Think Tank for organizing this session for the benefit of the teachers. Uh, since the topic is very new, both the teachers and the students are in the confusion state, and you know a lot of clarification is required. So, requesting you all to kindly respond to the teachers in case they come up with any questions, you know, to clarify, uh, we do appreciate. And uh, special thanks on behalf of Bangalore Sahodaya School Complex Association for getting associated with us and organizing this session. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah, it has been a, a pleasure for us as well, ma'am. Uh, yeah. And <clears throat> what we will do is. Uh, some of us will stay around those who have to move out uh, you can do that i'm just scanning through the chat and uh, yeah. also those in case there is any challenge with the feedback we can, we can do that right thank you very much thank you ma'am
one question I see is which questions are important for case study. So what we are uh, doing is we are looking at the weightage given to the uh, different topics in the last three, four years. And based on that, the workbooks that uh, we are designing, we are designing one case study for each of them. So the top seven to eight chapters is what we have picked up. So this was in response to what uh, you asked Sharda ma'am, uh, which are the lessons that are important for case study. So Raghu, I think in general there is a question about how the workbooks can be made available to the teachers and the <laughs> students. So I suppose uh, you'll take that up uh, through email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll uh, answer to the, the registrants on that. Yeah, so there's another request uh, asking to make this session available for reference on YouTube. So yes, we have uh, we have been recording the session, though the recording started a little late, but majority part of the session is recorded. So we will, uh, along with the answers to the chat question, we will also send the link to the session. But of course, what's a lot more valuable than this particular session is the actual uh, practice that we uh, we all can facilitate for the students. Mm, Gayatri ma'am, uh, you have asked should we follow the best four or four from first? Uh, I'm not sure I understood. I guess you are asking since each case study has five questions, which four uh, should be picked up? Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm not able to answer that. So if you can clarify, that would be helpful. And uh, please, uh, if, if you are still around and you want us to unmute, just let us know. We will. Also, uh, Swati has shared her email ID. Uh, very kind of you, Swati, to uh, make it available. I'm, I'm posting it on the group for everyone. And uh, trust me, the, <laughs> the uh, variety of things Swati has, uh, you'll be amazed to see it. And especially how it crosses the uh, subject boundaries. So I'm uh, copy pasting it here. And it never dropped out. Whatever the attendance we had between the last 15 minutes. Uh, Geeta ma'am, I see that uh, you have shared your email address. We are taking a note of it that uh, you are showing interest to become a part of uh, this program. Uh, Raghu will get in touch with you. Okay, uh, for the 
maths chapters the top 7 rather ma'am uh, I'll, i'll tell you the top 7 which we have found based on the marks weightage I'll, i'll read it out right away and since that's a question which uh, others are also asking but only thing is note that uh, this is not we, we do not have an information from cbse on which chapters uh, will fall under case study we are prioritizing the uh, case study design based on the weightage given in general in the last 3 years but what we are confident is the good news is unlike uh, other questions for case studies as children practice uh, the competency gets developed which is generic in nature and then it can be applied to even other chapters so any basis of prioritization as long as it is logical is good enough so our basis is the exam, uh, the marks weightage of the last 3 years i see that uh, many of you are sharing the email address uh, on the chat you may do that it's easier for us to uh, have it in one place so that's why it would be better if you uh, fill the feedback form so if you are facing any challenge there then uh, maybe this option can be used otherwise then it's in a single spreadsheet because as you can see the number of participants is huge for us the uh, it it would be very hard to track everything from multiple sources so the uh, for science the uh, topics that we have selected is metals and non metals periodic classification of elements life processes uh, how do organisms reproduce electricity magnetic effect of electric current light reflection and refraction these are the top 7 and there are some more because for each of the two subjects we are preparing at least 10 case studies in the first workbook which we plan to launch and uh, there will be few more where we will combine some of the smaller chapters so for example we plan to combine acid spaces and salts and chemical reactions and equations and create one case study around that carbon and its compounds will also get covered and control and coordination will also get covered <clears throat> let me read out the, the topics that we have planned for math
for math the topmost topics we have selected is uh, triangles introduction to trigonometry surface area and volumes arithmetic progression statistics real numbers uh, and coordinate geometry again as i said this is based on the weightage given to these chapters during the last 3 years the average weightage and we plan to create uh, more case studies by combining some of the other topics which have comparatively uh, relatively smaller weightage let's say pair of linear equations in two variables we would uh, also have uh, some case study on that and most likely we will have something on uh, probability and polynomials as well Sorry, I just saw the uh, request to unmute. I'll I'll do that now. If if you are still around, uh, I'll do that. Raku, uh, my computer is not uh, responding right now. Can you? So there are uh, some teachers who have uh, asked us to unmute them. Can you? Can you please do that? it is not allowing me to unmute okay uh, ask to unmute is coming and i'm clicking on that but i don't see any yeah yeah that's the only way so uh, uh, there is uh, a login with the name good afternoon uh, sir been... yes yes ma'am go ahead ma'am hi lata here from bangalore um, Uh, I, I I I didn't receive the feedback link, sir. Is it visible on the chat box, ma'am? Is it visible on the chat box form? No, it is, it is not visible. Many teachers are asking. not visible. Yeah, it is not visible. Uh, no, many teachers are are asking for the past fifteen minutes. It's not visible, sir. Kindly forward it. It's a request. No, I'm pasting every two three minutes. I think uh, it's visible now. Now it's everyone. It should be visible so it's now. Not visible. It's not. It is not visible to me, sir. Okay. In my device. Yeah. Now. Now I got it, sir. Okay. Yeah, so, it. No, the, I'm not changed any setting at all. So I'm. I'm feeling so. Ah, why it didn't show? I'm uh, puzzled. So post it again, sir. Yeah, yeah, sure. So 
प्लीज पोस्ट इट अगेन यू हैव पोस्टेड इज इट विजिबल Now what could be happening is since there are many chat messages uh, coming almost every few seconds this is getting scrolled up otherwise i can i can see the feedback from uh, the link being pasted is it visible now it's just loading not opening sir oh yeah uh, no, the, no that, sir, there are some uh, some loading, teachers who have actually. acknowledged that uh, they can they are able to see it so uh, gayatri ma'am uh, just acknowledging that i i understood your question now and uh, to be honest and i i see that someone else has also mentioned that so let's say out of the five questions so child answers all five and if one is incorrect then what's the mark scheme uh, <clears throat> to be honest i don't know i'll uh, but we'll check on this and uh, include the answer in the email that we send out oh. so raghu uh, we we have received some feedback already right so uh, it's only some participants who are uh, facing difficulty in getting the feedback form actually there was a problem uh, what i have sent it has gone to everyone in the meeting and i don't know when the option got activated i have never uh, posted to everyone in the meeting so some 15 minutes it was not accessible okay uh, so uh, some have uh, someone called me and asked me to post the link on sahodaya website so we will request manila ma'am on that Feedback. yeah the, yeah the, what you have pasted on the chat window right now when i'm clicking it it's working it's taking me uh, to the feedback form page so uh, i'm i'm just thinking is is the problem general or uh, only some because what could also be happening is if we are dropping out and coming back then the some chat is lost and also uh, with the <coughs> frequent chat messages it may be getting uh, going up so we have got around 50 plus excuse which are feedback forms okay okay excuse me sir yes yes kathi ma'am um, vishal sir I good afternoon you, sir yes ma'am good afternoon yes sir uh, this is guy to me i was the person who was asking uh, yes. regarding the creating of the marking scheme thank you for your feedback sir sure ma'am so because like what happens is uh, recently we had a pre board and few mm -hmm. students though it was the first time they had written the fifth one correct but in between one of the question was wrong one of mm -hmm. the answer what they had yeah. given was wrong so since it was the first time we gave them four marks but will that be followed in the board exam also was my doubt hmm hmm yeah yeah 
Vishal, you may leave. I think I'll be there for some more time. Fine. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Raghu. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Those who are still around, it was pleasure talking to you all. Bye.
Hello, uh, are there some questions?
So if uh, uh, we don't have anything else, we'll wind up in uh, another five minutes. Please let me know if there is anything to discuss. Thank you.